Hi everybody, my name is Toby Weiss and I'm the Senior Vice President and General Manager of EFI's Fiery Business Unit. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me for today's Engage keynote. I really wish we could be together in one room, but of course circumstances dictate otherwise. But we do have the option for you to ask Q&A and I can join you live after this presentation and I look forward to that. You know, normally I would give a presentation and talk about all of the features and functions that we added into our fiery digital front end to make your life so much better in print. But I want to take a little bit of a different approach today. Today, instead of bragging about all of the, the features that our color scientists might have added into the product, I want to take a different approach to the presentation. Rather, I'd like to take a step back and I would like to convince you of two points. The first point is that color is a one-way street. What do I mean by this? I mean that as we progress in color, as we get better with color and imaging technology, we can't go back. And that every time there is a technical innovation that makes colors or imaging seem better, that it's adopted and that from that point on, looking back at the old technology, we can't look at it the same way anymore. Now the second point that I want to make in today's presentation is that color matters. That this new technology, that better color, that better quality imaging that we see in almost all of our lives all the time, actually makes a very big difference. It matters because it evokes our emotion. It matters because it helps make purchasing decisions and ultimately if you're in the print and imaging business, it'll help make more profits. So let's get started. Now, the title of this presentation is A Colorful Year with a Bright Future. And of course, I'm talking about last year, 2020, being colorful and the future being from here on out. Now, 2020 was some year. There have been a lot of words to describe it. And there were tremendously impactful images that are going to be ingrained in our minds forever. Some of them are so vivid to me. But of course, when I think about them, I'm thinking about them in the bright colors that they existed in. Whether it was the brightness of the fires and who can forget them in the beginning of the year in Australia with almost one million acres, or the colors of the election, the colors of the frontline workers, and certainly colors of some very colorful characters. Now, what do I mean when I say it's a colorful year? I know I said I was going to talk to you about two very important points. But before I get back to those two points, let's talk a little bit about what do I mean um, when I talk about color and what do I mean by colorful? Well, the definition of colorful really means two things. The first is having much varied color or bright, a colorful array of fruit. And that's probably what you would think that I would want to talk about today, being in charge of a digital front end color server. But I want to spend a little bit of time first talking about the second definition. That is colorful being full of interest, lively, exciting, um, a controversial and colorful character. And I'm sure we can all think of many colorful characters. Now, when I think about communicating with the colorful characters that I work with all the time, of course, I can look back on the year 2020 and think it was a very colorful year as well. Normally when I think of a brand color, I might think of Coca-Cola red or the color of the green in the Starbucks logo or McDonald's colors. But I think 2020 introduced us to a whole new set of colors that we might not have been as familiar with. That's a little bit of a test for you right now, an at-home quiz. Can you name the logos for each of these pandemic 2020 companies? I'll give you a few minutes. No, just kidding. You probably figured them out already whether it was Google Meet, whether it was WebEx, Microsoft Teams, Skype, Zoom, GoToMeeting. We probably spent a little too much time on each of these platforms in 2020. But towards the end of the year, there were a couple of brand colors in 2020 that came on the scene and delivered hope, that delivered us promise. And of course, those were the colors that represented the companies delivering the vaccine to us, Moderna and Pfizer maybe some corporate logos that not everyone was familiar with until they showed up late in 2020. 
Now, speaking of colors and color for logos in 2020, of course, I'm a very big fan of the Pantone color of the year. And in 2020, Pantone actually named two colors of the year. You can see a yellow called Illuminate and a gray. Now, some would say that the yellow is evoking a feeling of brightness, of color, of cheering, of warm energy. It's, it's the sun rising over the gray of the, the dull 2020, the pandemic 2020. It's, it's giving us hope. Well, that might be the case. It certainly evokes part of that emotion. Other people might say, hey, I've seen those colors, yellow and gray, before. Who can forget in December of 2019 when the very famous artwork of the banana duct taped to the wall was taking the headlines of, of all of the newspapers across the country? Well, besides the artwork, I think 2020 was full of colorful characters as well. Whether we look at Billie Eilish, where her hair color is, is part of her identity, um, or the President of the United States, Donald Trump, who oftentimes people can even notice uh, the changes in the orange in his skin, whether he applied too much tanning or not. And those are two characters who really have been almost branded, in a sense, by those colors. Very exciting, bright fluorescent colors, which made their way in print in 2020, and I'll talk about that in a second as well. Well, the news was obviously very colorful in 2020. Whether we think about the bright orange colors of those wildfires, in fact, where I live in the Bay Area in California, there were a couple of days in the summer where our fires were so bad, the sky outside was actually orange. I've never seen anything like it. It was like you were walking outside with orange sunglasses on. And that is a color that will stick with me for the rest of my life. But of course, we can remember the colors of the frontline workers who so bravely and tirelessly helped us through some of the healthcare crisis in 2020. And of course, the colors of protest that were happening throughout 2020 as well will always stand out in my mind. And besides those, I think we saw colors become part of our everyday life in terms of helping us be more safe. The sign, the signage that we saw, whether it was masks required, whether it was reminding us to stay six feet away, um, or even the, the creativeness in the masks themselves that were customized printing. I'll not only remember these colors, but I'm going to remember this particular uh, signage and creativity as one of the examples of resiliency in the print industry. You know, there were certain companies who made their entire business making signage for exhibits or stadiums, and they almost went out of business overnight once we started having pandemic shutdowns. But many of them quickly pivoted with the entrepreneurial spirit that we see all the time in the print industry to be able to create new businesses, in this case, signage, divisional graphics, telling people to stay apart um, or socially distance. Now, besides being out and seeing the signs, I think we all know that staying at home was a little bit colorful as well in 2020. If you look at the alcohol sales, wine was up almost 10%. Beer, 13, almost 14 percent. Whiskey, 30 percent. And to be honest, a little bit of a surprise for me, tequila, the big winner in the summer of 2020, with almost an increase in 64 percent on its sales compared to the summer before. I always thought of tequila as more of a going out alcohol than a staying at home, but I guess I learned something new. Now, staying at home reminds me that we had to become our own production virtuosos in 2020. We all learned about color in our home, in our home office. Uh, whether we had to buy a, a ring light uh, to help make our, our uh, Zoom calls uh, more colorful, our, our virtual backgrounds that we might have had. We became sound engineers, uh, some of us. We certainly, a lot of people learned how to use the mute button. A lot of people didn't learn how to use the mute button. We even had to learn our, 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 our wardrobe. And the reason I bring this up is because this gave us insight into what a production manager, 
uh, has to deal with every day. Um, you know, everyone has similar situation at home, but their appearance is very, very, very different. And it's this being able to understand that there's going to be different light, different color, different environment to make our production uh, come off well, even if it's just a Zoom call, is very similar to the world of color and imaging where all the environmental variables as well are going to play a role in how things come out. Now speaking of working at home, I wanted to just express a little bit of gratitude to the over 8,000 people who took remote learning sessions and became fiery professionally certified experts in the year 2020. It's an amazing accomplishment and I want to thank you because they spent almost 15 hours each taking the courses required to brush up their skills so that they could get back to work and help their customers producing the best results possible. And many people upped their game in 2020 with remote trainings, remote certifications, uh, remote demonstrations, not just learning how to bake sourdough. Now that we talked a little bit about the first definition, let's talk about the second definition of color. And this is where I want to get back to my two points that I mentioned earlier. That color is a one-way road and that color matters. The second definition of color, of course, is having much or varied color or bright. Now, we can actually look at a pretty neat tool that Google has called Google Ngram, which allows us to type in a word and see its usage over time. So I typed in the word colorful and what did I find out? Well, what I learned is that the word colorful wasn't really used until the beginning of the 1900s. It wasn't very popular and then you can see it start to take off. So what does this mean? Well, obviously it means color wasn't invented before 1900. Everything in the world was just black and white or dull. Well, obviously that's not the case, although photographs would make us believe that. The reality is why the word colorful wasn't used is because color is, um, uh, its usage really comes a lot from the fashion industry and from textiles. And it wasn't until the late 1800s that we even had the first synthetic dyes, actually purple was one of the first synthetic dyes uh, that could be put on clothing. And so prior to um, really the, the turn of the century, clothes just weren't very colorful because it wasn't practical. If you were to have uh, colorful clothes, they could get dirty very easily. So only very rich or wealthy people wore them. In fact, people who wore colorful clothes who weren't rich were, were, were looked down upon uh, by society. Um, and, and there was oftentimes uh, colors were associated with prostitution, for example. But what we saw uh, later on is that as the technology improved, we started to see more color in clothing. And so, in, for example, with the, let's say the 1930s, where the 40 hour work week uh, started to come, uh, 40 hour work week and, and leisure, a middle class, uh, we started to see more and more color come onto the scene because the technology got better as well. It was actually in the South Florida uh, resorts that a lot of the designers would test out their new colors. And that became a hot spot. And of course in the, in the 60s and 70s, uh, clothing became very, very colorful. And today, with print-on-demand digital textile technology, you have an almost endless amount of colorways for a particular dress or piece of clothing that you might want to buy or wear. In fact, you could even go to a website, put your own design up and get some clothing um, created that way. And this is an important point because we are not going to go backwards. Clothing is not going to go from having rich colors and being exciting and vibrant. It's not going to go back to the dress that you see on the left hand side of the screen in the 1800s or the dull colors. Um, as clothing gets um, you know, more and more advanced, you'll start to see brighter colors, colors that couldn't be made before. Um, and this is very similar to almost all areas of technology. In fact, I remember when I was little and the Sunday newspaper would come and I would rush out to the front door to be able to get my hands on the comic pages. Now those comics appeared in color 
but the rest of the newspaper was in black and white. And I was mesmerized. Uh, and this was just truly amazing. I could see all of the comics in color during the week. I could only see them in black and white. Now when I looked at those colorful comics, I didn't think to myself, oh, it could be more crisp, it could be sharper, it could be clear. I was just amazed at, at this technology, I guess, um, amazed that it looked better. And from that day forward, I could never unsee the colorful comics. Same thing when we got our first color television in my house. Once you had color television, it was very, very difficult ever to go look at that black and white television the same way. And when we looked at the color television, we didn't say to ourselves, oh, I can only just imagine the day when this is going to be so much more crisp or so much more clear. No, we were just blown away at the technology at the time, and it forever changed our view on the world. In fact, today, still, 40 years later, 50 years later, when you go to buy a television, of course, the quality of the color in the imaging is uh, the most important feature. And people are buying 4K, you know, OLED curved screens because watching your game, your match on that television is such a better experience than watching it in the old television. In fact, now when you go look at that older generation television and it's not in 4K or it's not in HD, you you, you can't look at it the same way. It's difficult to watch. It feels incredibly, incredibly old. Now, fashion and television are not the only two areas. Of course, in our industry, the print industry, it's the same way. And that is why when you were to go into a high-end car dealership, you would see a beautiful brochure. And it's not just because they want the colors in the brochure to match the color of the car, but because you're making such a large purchase, one that might be tens of thousands of dollars potentially, that they want you to feel like their business is the highest end business. They want to evoke the emotions that put you over the line to be able to make a purchase. And it doesn't have to be a car dealership. Critical color matters in almost any business presentation. The very highest end M&A transactions, a banker from Goldman Sachs or uh, Morgan Stanley would show up with a pitch book. And that pitch book would be printed on very, very high end stock with a nice cover and of course wonderful sharp colors. Now inside that pitch book might just be Excel tables talking about the benefits of the M&A maybe with some logo colors. But the fact that it's printed in the highest end possible because they want their customers to have that same feeling, to have the feeling that this is the right idea, not just the content, but the presentation of it matters as well. Now, I will tell you that this matters no matter what you're printing, whether it's a brochure for a car dealership, whether it's an M&A transaction, whether it's a PowerPoint presentation that you're just giving your boss, or handouts at a meeting. If the quality of the print is better, people will notice and they will think more highly of the quality of the content as well. And in 2020, we saw a lot of new technology hit the street. And we're starting to see more and more designers design it with it and end users want it because it helps them differentiate. Some of that new technology that we've seen in print includes fluorescent colors. It also includes metallics, gold and silver. I think one of the most exciting technologies is white. For digital print to be able to lay down white toner opens up the entire world of printing on black or dark media. It also allows us to print very shiny and metallic colors by printing on silver or gold metallic media, putting a white on top of it and then CMYK after that. And of course, um, there's been more advancement with clear, not just clear coats, but being able to pile up clear to give us a textured feel for some of these documents as well. Much the same way, um, five or six years ago, Adobe introduced the ability to add transparencies or blends into their creative suite, and that colors were quickly adopted by almost every corporation who wanted to be able to put transparencies or blends in their corporate logos, much the same way the Engage logo has it today.
And so we see another example. Um, we've seen it with clothes, we've seen it with TVs, we've seen it with the newspapers, and of course we're seeing it with print again, where when new technology comes, people want that new technology and they can't look back. We're probably going to look back at prints prior to the year 2020, and it's going to be very noticeable that they didn't have fluorescent colors, they didn't have white toner, they didn't have shiny metallics. It's going to be the same way that we look back on our black and white TVs. Now, let's give some examples of um, how we can actually produce better quality color and imaging um, today. Now, the computer scientists and color scientists that we have in EFI worked for almost five years to release something called Fiery Edge, a new technology that really challenges the color gamut at the very edge of it. Take a look at the picture on the left versus the picture on the right. You can easily see that the picture on the right has more outstanding color. The dress, or the shirt rather, the jacket that she's wearing is brighter. The, the shirt and the bag do not look like they've been through the wash 25 times. You can see the differences in the hair and skin tone and the color of the jeans. Even look at the steps behind her. You can see clearly the definition. And that's the difference between a very, very good print and an okay print. You know, I'm the owner of a digital camera, the Fujifilm X100. I am by no means even a decent amateur photographer, but um, I like occasionally to try to take pictures, maybe for our holiday photos for the family, for example. This camera, which by the way looks like a vintage camera, is actually a digital camera. It has over 35 different settings on it. Now you start to do the mathematical combinations of 35 different settings because each one is not on or off. There's multiple settings. So you can have really a tremendous amount of combinations. I like to think of a digital front end that sits in front of a printer as similar. Of course it's got many, many, many features and configurations that allow you, the customer, to get the best print you might want to get. But sometimes it's daunting to figure out exactly what is the right setting. And many places, let's face it, many shops don't have the skills in-house anymore to be able to do this. And so when you think about a digital front end and all of the settings it might have to do, it really has to have some knowledge of, of what is being printed. Is it coming from an RGB you know, space? Is it got spot colors? It, does it have transparencies? Um, does it have fine lines and text and graphics? And so we introduced some super exciting technology called Fiery Job Expert, which looks at a PDF file, sees the attributes of those files, uses intelligence to then automatically print it with the right settings. That's going to allow the right print to come out the first time without any experimentation. And that is really the power of having this digital expertise built into your color server. Of course, if you're an expert and you want to be able to play with all of those settings the same way I would maybe hire a professional photographer, um, of course those settings are still there and we'll continue to expand on them for the professionals. But for the rest of us who might want to automate and don't have the time or resources to do it, Fiery is going to make the right choice for you for that print. Now, once you have the right color, as we all know, one of the battles is to maintain the color because maintaining the right color in imaging equals trust in digital print. You can see these cat food and you might notice right away one of them stands out. Now, if you were the buyer of this food, you might not choose that package. If you were selling the prints, your customer would certainly notice that one of them is not the same as the other. And so it's important to get that sort of consistency. Now, conquering color, of course, is no easy feat. It involves um, having some sort of standard, whether your standard is, I like the way it looks, or whether you have a very high-end you know, ISO standard that you're holding your shop accountable towards. You have to, of course, take into account the equipment you have. You have to be able to take into account the consumables you have, your calibration processes, your proofing. You have to verify all of that, of course, to be able to make sure that you got the result that you need. And sometimes it really does feel like 
you're climbing a mountain to be able to get the result that you want to get. And that's why we introduced another new exciting technology in 2020. And it was a series of cloud-based applications called Fiery IQ. IQ, of course, playing off of intelligence and image quality. And it's a suite of applications that really help you make more intelligent decisions about your production print. When it comes to color, we have an IQ application called Color Guard. A little bit difficult to see on this screenshot, but it allows you to automate the processes that you would have to make sure that you're getting the best color and the most consistent color all the time. Shops are using this to make sure their processes are followed, but they're also using this to help sell their product to their customers. Wouldn't it be great to be able to show your customers, here is an online application we use every single day. We measure the color. It's within, let's say, 3 delta E, if that is our standard good one to have because it's very difficult to notice differences below 3 delta E. Um, and you can show that every single day your shop manages, measures, verifies to get the best color. Your customers are going to have confidence that you're a well-run business and they're going to have the confidence to know that their jobs are going to come out each and every time. Which ultimately means that you're not going to have rejections in a business and that the color is going to be accepted because it's incredibly important. When we look forward to 2021, the rest of 2021 and beyond, I have a tremendous amount of hope. And one thing that I know for certain is that all of this new technology that's been developed in the industry is going to be used. Clothing is going to get more and more color. Printed materials are going to get more and more color. And we're never going to be able to look back at the old technology the same way. The same way that I'm not going to be able to look at a black and white TV and not think, wow, that's old. I'm not going to be able to look at clothing that doesn't have uh, a certain type of color or sharpness. And the same way I'm never going to be able to look at high-end digitally printed color products the same way that I could look at the previous generation. I want to thank everybody for all of their support in 2020. And when I look at to 2021, I'm super excited. I, get, I, hope to, I hope I get to spend time with each and every one of you in person. It's certainly going to be very rewarding for me. And I want to leave you with these final thoughts. Color matters at all levels. Whether it's our clothing, our televisions, our phones, our printed materials, our handouts, color matters. Color is evolving. It's going to continuously get better and we need to be ready to take on this new technology and color is valuable. It evokes the emotions that the designers intended and that the customers want. And that's important for branding, that's important for appeal, it's important for motivation, and of course, it's important to a business's bottom line. As the general manager of the Fiery Business Unit, I want to thank everybody so much for attending this keynote, and I look forward to the Q&A. Have a great 2021.